everyone, Ms. Go Electric here, and today I'm at the SK booth at CES 2023, and I have a special guest with me here today who is the president of SK Signet in America. This is SJO, and he's here to talk about all the new products that they have here in the SK booth. And a lot of people might not know that SK has a ton of partners and companies under their umbrella. So SJO, can you give us a little bit of information as to what the kind of scope that SK covers. Sure, sure. So SK Group is uh, Korea's uh, maybe uh, second largest uh, conglomerate. Uh, we have a hundred, more than 130 subsidiaries that has a SK brand on. And uh, as a group wise, we have an annual turnover of uh, over $150 billion. Uh, so we're quite a large company. Uh, our business, uh, primary business is in the energy, telecom, and uh, semiconductor. And uh, we're not very well known because we are a very industrial company. Uh, and with industrial, uh, it has like a kind of brown image. Sure. So uh, we decided in, uh, in uh, uh, 2017 to transform our group into a more uh, environmental friendly and green uh, group. And this is how it all happened. And uh, most recently, the energy company has been uh, building the EV batteries. Oh, yeah. And uh, we have, a, it's called, the company is called SK On. Uh, very, uh, we have a very large battery plant in Georgia. And also we are like building up the EV ecosystem. And also where I'm at, SK Signet, uh, we're part of that ecosystem. And we're providing the, all the, ultra fast charging uh, for the EVs that will be released in the US and globally. Awesome. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit and focus a little bit more on the SK Signet portion of the business because that is your specialty. Yes. Um, you have units that were actually deployed a long time ago, but that was before SK acquired Signet, correct? So now what we're seeing is that you guys are able to have your own products, which right behind us is what we'll talk about here in a moment. But can you talk a little bit more about the deployment of this new technology in these charging stations that you have coming out? Sure. Uh, so we entered the so SK Signet uh, prior to the acquisition in 2021, uh, supplied our chargers to the Nissan uh, dealership. As you well know, like Nissan Leaf was the most uh, common EV car in the beginning. And also we, our next uh, uh, biggest project was uh, with Electric for America. Yeah. And uh, prior to uh, SK acquisition, uh, you know, they were in the build out of cycle one and two. And now after SK acquisition, we are participating in the cycle three project. And uh, we have uh, more than 2,500 uh, chargers. Uh, all uh, uh, speed is uh, above 150 kilowatt. And our primary product is a uh, 350 kilowatt uh, ultra fast charger. Uh, we are the largest scale provider of these uh, 350 kilowatt chargers in the United States. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, I can say that we have at least uh, at least 30 percent of the market share in North America, and uh, because of that project, uh, it gave it, it was our reference and it uh, allowed us to uh, roll out our product to EVgo, another uh, large uh, CPO. Exactly. And I can't name all of them, but we work with all five uh, top uh, CPOs in the North America, and also uh, a lot of uh, fleet charging companies are now requesting uh, this product. Uh, so, and we also work with almost all the EV OEMs Sure. In North America. We gotta make uh, sure there's interoperability, yeah. right? We, we make sure our chargers uh, interop uh, with more than like uh, 40 models of EV cars. And it's just booming, booming market right now. It is, so. and now we have the um, National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program that's gonna be put in place. The installation of these new chargers are gonna be coming out this year. Yes. Um, but you guys have a facility that's coming online yes. very soon, right here in the United yes. States, correct? Yes, yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, sure. We have a facility and right now is uh, we're retrofitting the factory. 
uh, it will be online uh, this year, uh, this year, first quarter. And uh, right now, as I speak, uh, many people are trying to upgrade the facility into a uh, uh, EV charging uh, station manufacturing facility. It used to be owned by Raytheon. Oh, okay. So they used they to make have. missiles there. And so we're converting that into a EV charging factory. So uh, it's in Plano, Texas, and uh, very close to Dallas, a very central location. And I believe that area will, be, will become like an EV charging uh, manufacturing hub. Uh, after we entered, many other companies are entering that uh, area to build their EV charging factories there. Oh, interesting, so, yeah. Toyota has a, a pl yeah, an office there. Headquarter. Yeah. Their US headquarters is in Plano, Texas. Exactly, so yes. you have good company there and a good yes. field of employees that are used to working in this realm to some extent sure, with automotive. Sure. Yes. Is this unit gonna be built in that facility? Yes, uh, this is what we call a V2 unit. This product will be uh, built in the factory and uh, back to your NEVI, the NEVI. Yep. So that one has to be like 600 kilowatt. And so 600 kilowatt uh, power cabinet and uh, 150 kilowatt dispensers. Like this is what we call a dispenser. And you, we can have four of these dispensers in a uh, Navy uh, sponsored uh, charging station. Right, and they all have to be minimum 150 kilowatts. So that I'm assuming is what so we have here. This, is, this, this can cover from 150 to 400 kilowatts. Wow, 400 kilowatts. Yeah. That's pretty much so the I, fastest that yeah, I've seen. We, we pretty are, close to it. We are very focused on ultra fast charging. So we are pushing the edge. So we were, uh, we, we're like the leader in the 350 kilowatt. So now we're getting a step above 400 kilowatt. There's no car out there that can, can take, take one, it yet. but uh, we know it's gonna come. So we wanna move Thinking ahead. Thinking ahead, that's yes. really, really smart. Now, this unit in itself, uh, how is it gonna differ from the units that were on the market beforehand? Because there was some issues with reliability of these units, particularly in hot and cold extreme temperatures that might've had issues. So. What is SK Signet doing to improve that for the next generation? So as with any new industry and new technology, uh, things don't work, you know, always the way you kind of theorize it, right? So we're constantly fixing and we have our engineers uh, working on it every day, you know, like almost every day, no holidays. Oh yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, because, uh, this is infrastructure product. We have to make sure that all the EV drivers can safely and reliably charge their cars to get to their destination. And uh, the reason why we focus on uh, high-speed charging, ultra-fast charging, is because America is large. Uh, uh, so Americans long. travel long distances. Yes. So we want to get rid of that uh, range anxiety. So that's why we focus on uh, high-speed charging. And it has uh, it had a lot of uh, reliability issues, but uh, because we have so many deployed in the field, we have a lot of data on what's wrong, and and we use that data to improve our uh, uh, our product, not only with uh, by ourselves but with our partners. We constantly request feedback from our uh, customers, like Electro for America, EVgo many others that I just cannot publicly mention. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and this new product is really, uh, is actually the first product that SK, since SK acquisition, we developed internally. So we developed the power models ourselves. Uh, as you can see, uh, the screen size got much bigger. Huge screen, yeah. yes. Uh, 32 inch screen. Uh, we have a status. Marquee kind yeah, of thing. status uh, marquee, things. yes. This product is uh, pretty much a Navy specified product. So this fits into the Navy spec. So what does all this screen do right here? We're seeing some videos play on here, but right. what it, is, it, you know, this gonna display when someone comes up to the charger? Sure, sure. It, it's gonna uh, explain how to use a charger. Because many problem, uh, so we, one of the uh, key factors that we track is like plug-in success. Uh, meaning like you plug it in and... Does the handshake, it, does the handshake yeah, does work? Yeah, does it work yep. or not, right? 
So uh, we want to make it as easy as possible. And we think uh, interaction, uh, interactive screen on you know, how it works and how to use it is uh, very important. That's why we have a large screen. So this has a credit card reader, I see, but there's also a feature where you can just plug it in and it reads yes, your uh, That's what vehicle, we call right? uh, PNC. Plug and charge. That's right. We were the, actually the first company in the United States to launch this uh, product. So, uh, SK Signet was our first company to get the UL certification on the 350 kilowatt chargers and also the plug and charge. So, our first car that uh, uh, we succeeded on the plug and charge was a Ford Mustang Mach E. Yes, and I actually rode that across the country. Yeah. Okay. Yes, in a rally on the Charge Across America rally. Right. And uh, yeah, we experienced plug and charge throughout that whole process and charged on some of your units. So yes. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, plug and charge is uh, what we are very proud of. And now we're testing on the Ford uh, F-150 lighting truck and you know any car that gets released, uh, we try to, if it has that plug and charge feature, we make sure it works correctly with our chargers. Yeah. So as far as heating and cooling with this particular unit, is there anything different that you're doing or um, any changes in the operating temperature that is facilitating this for more reliability and uptime? Sure, sure. So uh, we do test our units for extreme temperatures. Uh, however, uh, in the summertime, so you, you see how thick the cables yes. are? Yeah, they have a, what we call chilling system because it they're high energy, 480 volt and 350 kilowatt. That's a, a lot high power. Yes. So it creates a lot of heat. So we work with uh, this company called Hoover and Sooner to install the most advanced and the most reliable cooling system. So inside they have liquid inside, liquid uh, chilled uh, cable. And also inside we have a chiller. Basically it's like a refrigerator inside. Yeah. So making sure that our chargers do not heat up. And so in the summer, that, that's what we do. In the winter, actually, our chargers are work better because it doesn't heat that much. It's cool. You're not getting the extreme hot yeah. temperatures. It can manage the cold a lot exactly. better. Exactly. It, it works better. But recently, the polar vortex and the bomb cyclone, yeah, or whatever the they very, call it, very, yeah. very cold, frigid weather. Uh, we have impact, but uh, I don't think our plug-in success rate or our availability went down because of this uh, cold weather. Uh, so we still operate all under the temperature that we're uh, specified to, and uh, we didn't have any issues uh, like some other companies that. Uh, they the might have winter. encountered, yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, um, look, uh, our fear is more of the summertime in the deserts and when it gets it, really, really hot. Yeah, yeah that exactly. makes sense. Now, uh, as we talk about SK Signet coming out with this new product, of course, you're going to innovate and improve for more in the future. So, what are those four topics that SK Signet is focusing on for future deployment of new products? So, uh, believe it or not, there's a lot of software going on. Uh, software development going on into this charger. So uh, we take uh, cybersecurity very seriously. And uh, uh, we also, you know, uh, and the availability of the chargers are uptime. So uh, we are achieved for 99%. Good, very good. We're not there yet. Uh, but even that uh, increasing 1%, it's like, it takes a task. time. It yeah. is a big task. Uh, so, but that's where we're very focused. Uh, we make our own power modules. Uh, the power modules are actually not here, but we it, this is connected to our power cabinet, the okay. rectifier unit where it, where it connects to the grid. And inside that uh, power cabinet, we have a multiple power model. Uh, many other companies uh, buy these power modules from China. We develop our own in-house and we manufacture our own. Uh, we we do that because then we can customize how much power uh, can we provide to this, and we can you know, dictate the shape of the product, and we don't have to rely on the Chinese-made uh, power mode. You're more in control in that case too, so you can actually see the data that is feeding not only from the charger but also that 
that modular system, correct? And that just makes it a lot easier for the power to be pulled from that cabinet and not directly from the grid so that you know, you can have multiple EVs charging and there not be exactly. an issue. Yes, uh, yeah, you mentioned about multiple EVs. So another uh, software feature that we're working on is uh, what we call active power sharing. So using one power cabinet to uh, charge multiple uh, EVs, uh, but some EVs can only take 50, some EVs can take 350. So we wanna make sure that we don't send all the energy wasted to that 50 kilowatt uh, car. Sure, that so makes to sense. That EV. So that's why we call it active power sharing, dynamic power sharing, and it's a smart system. It 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 recognizes a car, and mm -hmm. it knows that this can this car can take 350. Then we disperse 350 to that car, and we can also do it like uh, we can program it to do like priority who came in first, and who has a lower uh, state of charge. Then we can take more power to that car because that car needs it. Uh, yeah, needs it right now. So. <laughs> I mean, those are all kind of things that's going on in the background, uh, utilizing our data from our uh, previous deployment and uh, talking with our customers. And I think uh, being flexible and uh, customizing according to the data, what the market is asking for is uh, our key strengths right now. Sure. Oh. You're going to be building this unit soon in Texas. Uh -huh. How many do you guys plan on manufacturing? Do you have a certain number, a rate sure. that you plan on to get these rolling out? We are able to build 10,000 units uh, of this uh, charger. Uh, we also have the tech. Uh, when you come to our facility, you'll see that we have a lot of space. Uh, so our factory, we can expand uh, to build more if there's uh, more demand. So right now, uh, we're just focusing on making sure that Texas Factory can be uh, very operational and uh, uh, do not, don't expand too fast. So really uh, just accommodating to the demand. Sure. So we're very flexible. We can expand, you know, reduce and... Absolutely. But right now, our capacity is at 10,000 units. Very impressive. Well, this was a real treat talking a little bit more about SK Signet and what you guys are doing for this upcoming year, because this is a big year for EV infrastructure. And I'm glad to hear that the topics that you are focused on are the ones that I've been most concerned about in getting reliable chargers out there with uptime, because we'll have more EV adoption if that's the case. And that's really what I'm passionate about. So I'm glad we share the same passion here. So thank you so much, SJO, for spending some time with us today. Uh, thank, thank you, Ms. Electric. Uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, speaking with you and I really uh, want to invite you to our uh, grand opening ceremony of our Plano, Texas factory and to show you how these uh, chargers are made. I would love that. I am definitely going to take you up on that offer. Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate your time. Yep. <laughs>